Welcome to another edition of Heritage Highlights with me, Chris Tracy, Archive Specialist at Norfolk Heritage Centre, located on the second floor of the Norfolk and Norwich Millennium Library. This ongoing series of brief talks examines key items from the Heritage Centre collections. And today we're focusing on two particularly striking examples from our collection of broadside news sheets. For approximately 300 years, up until the mid to late 19th century, broadsides occupied the space today filled by tabloid newspapers and social media, bringing news, gossip and advertising to people across the country, including the working class, for whom newspapers and quality prints would have been largely unaffordable. As their name suggests, broadsides comprised single sheets of paper designed to be read unfolded, pasted up in public places or sold cheaply for a penny or half penny a time. They often featured text in the form of ballads or songs or salacious or humorous comment, which was sometimes, though not always, accompanied by one or more woodcut images. Run off by printers in urban centres, they were then bought up by street criers, peddlers and hawkers to be sold in outlying towns, villages, markets and fairs. These two examples from our collections, one reporting the sale of a wife, the other advertising the public appearance of a performing elephant, both illustrate how evocative and immediately appealing broadsides can be and how useful for the social historian. As their apparent newsworthiness attests, wife sales were not common, but instances are reported to have occurred from the late 18th and into the 19th century. Though undated, the typography and design of our sale of a wife broadside suggests that it dates from the early 1800s. Readers of Thomas Hardy's The Mayor of Casterbridge, whose plot hinges on the consequences of a wife sale will be familiar with what to modernise seems an abhorrent and shocking concept. However, this broadside's opening paragraph indicates that there is more going on than meets the eye. This morning, a most comely and handsome young woman was conducted into the market in order to be sold. She had been married upwards of two years, but for the last six months, her spouse had done little else than drink day and night. Discontent and quarrelling was the consequence, and both willing to part to the market they came. While the text goes on to revel somewhat dubiously in the bidding war that ensues, this first paragraph seems to confirm the judgments of later historians of the period, that such wife sales were in fact a way for ordinary working class people who did not have access to legal divorce to separate semi-officially. While our other example, advertising the appearance of a performing elephant, the sagacity of which justly terms him the learned or half-reasoning beast, also manifests attitudes unlikely to be shared by many of us today, in this case regarding animal welfare, it is similarly evocative of its period again undated, but likely to have been printed in the late 18th or early 19th century. Its simple woodcut image of an elephant is accompanied by text which revels in hyperbolic description. The elephant fires off a pistol, takes any gentleman's hat off and puts it on again, tells the time of day, shows the company how he would protect his keeper from the ravages of wild beasts. On and on it goes, and while the modern reader can, of course, simply enjoy the superlatives and verbal flourishes for their own sake, there is much here for those wishing to gain a deeper, deeper sense of the period. By the late 18th century, as shown by the success of books such as Thomas Buick's A General History of Quadrupeds, 
published in 1790, and A History of British Birds, published in two volumes in 1797 and 1804, there was a growing curiosity about the natural world amongst the public. Of course, our performing elephant broadside, advertising a travelling show, manifests an aspect of this which encompasses popular entertainment, with more than a hint of hucksterism. However, this surely only adds to its interest as a historical document. While the majority of Norfolk Heritage Centre's broadsides have not been digitised and can only be viewed on request, you can view many of our more visually arresting examples online via the website Picture Norfolk. Thank you for watching.